Good morning and welcome to Elmwood Park Zoo's Zoo School Live. My name is Elisa and I'm an educator here at EPZ. And today we're going to learn about bluffing. I'm not talking about what to do with your face in order to win at cards. I'm talking about what my friend Hoggle here might do to protect himself from predators if he lived in the wild. So Hoggle is a Western hognose snake. We've had him for quite a while. He's actually going to turn 13 years old on July 7th, um, this July. So he's gonna be a teenager. Um, in the wild, they only live to be maybe 10, 11, 12. Um, but in human care, in a zoo, for example, he might live to be 15 or 20. So back to the bluffing. Hognose snakes do some really cool stuff. Um, they actually fake their own death if they're scared. So they flip their bodies completely over so that they're on their backside, their bellies are up, they'll open their mouth, they stick their tongue out and make it really limp. Sometimes they'll even bleed from their mouth or even poop. And sometimes they'll even com you know, have like convulsions, kind of like what um, you would think a human might, might have if they had a seizure. So they, they really go all out to try and pretend that they're dead. And they do this as their defense mechanism to survive in the wild. Um, they're called hognose snakes because they have a hog nose. So um, if you look a little bit closer to Hoggle's face, you can see that he has a nose that kind of looks like it's upward. And he uses that as a shovel um, to dig in the sand. So if he's not able to pretend dead, he's going to dig his way and burrow under that sand with that nose in order to hide away. Of course, now he's slithering away. <laughs> Hi, Hoggle. <laughs> um, so Hoggle here uh, is also sticking his tongue out to show you that he's sniffing his environment. So he really moves well in the sand um, with the rougher scales that he has. Um, I have a couple of pictures to show you kind of what he does to make himself look big and scary. So before he acts dead, what these guys will do is they'll make themselves really flat. So they, uh, this is called hooded. So they almost look like a king cobra snake, right? When they flatten their, the scales over by their neck and their head. So they'll do this. And then, like I said before, when they play dead, they flip literally upside down and their belly scales are facing up in the sky and their mouth is open and their tongue is sticking limply out. And they do this to try and not get eaten. So once they wake up, they try and, um, you know, kind of look at their surroundings. And then if it's, if the coast is clear, they'll end up slithering very quickly away. So you can see right now that Hoggle's head is kind of lifted up. So that means he's kind of curious. He's uh, sticking his tongue out quite a lot. So he's definitely <laughs> sensing something. Um, the other thing that these guys will do is their defense mechanism is they will inflate and then they will let out a really, really big exhale, but they'll hiss while doing so. So um, a question that I get a lot when teaching programs about his defense mechanisms is if he displays any of these types of behaviors um, with us or on program. So a couple of them, but not all of them. He's never played dead before. Um, and if you, uh, in the wild, if you, not that I recommend doing this, but if a snake, if a hognose is flipped back over on their backside, they will, uh, or sorry, if they get flipped back over onto um, right side up, they will flip themselves repeatedly back over so that they're upside down um, to try and just continuously pretend to be dead. Um, but he has hissed before for sure. Um, he does make that hooded appearance, that flat neck. Um, and he does sometimes, not often, sometimes he will strike, but with hognose snakes, it is very, very rare for them to strike with their mouth open. So when a snake strikes with their mouth open, that usually means they mean business. They're, they are trying to attack to protect themselves. Sometimes snakes will fake it, which is another thing that he fakes is that he'll strike with his mouth closed. And that means that he's just trying to scare you. Um, but he almost never does that. It's only happened maybe once or twice. Um, but he's never played dead. Um, only sometimes does he hiss. And it's really only when he's about to get picked up. So sometimes if you don't announce your presence and he gets a little startled. Other than that, he's a very, very calm hog nose. Um, these guys are sometimes kept as pets. 
Um, so they can be rather docile and um, make relatively good pets. Though ball pythons tend to be the most common first snake pet. Um, so hoggle here is found in the more western areas of the United States, so from like southern Canada all the way down to northern Mexico. We do have eastern hognose snakes in the southeastern part of the United States, and they look really, really similar. Um, these guys get just about this big. They don't weigh that much at all. They weigh maybe 185 grams, so they don't even weigh enough to measure them in pounds. Um, they only get to be about this length, which I wanna say is about two feet, but um, I'd have to check on that. Um, also, their undersides are really, really brightly colored. So I'm gonna pick him up again carefully so that you guys can take a look of the underside um, of his belly. He feels a lot different compared to most other snakes. Most other snake scales are very, very smooth. Um, a lot of people think that snakes are slimy, but they're actually not slimy at all. So their scale, scales are made out of keratin, just like your nails and your hair. So they're really, really smooth. Um, his are actually a little bit more rough and that helps him um, in the sand. And the underside of his belly is multicolored. Usually in really, 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 really hot places, snakes will have light colored underbellies so they don't burn themselves. Um, he lives in an area where it gets hot and both cold, so he has kind of dark colored underbelly. So again, I'm gonna gently pick him up. Hi, Hoggle, I'm here. I know. You got a little scared, didn't you? You okay? So you can see those really bright underbelly scales. Now in the wild, these guys, the most um, prominent thing that they eat are toads. 80% of their diet consists of toads. They actually have teeth in the back of their mouths. So what toads will do to protect themselves as their defense mechanism is that they'll blow up um, they'll get really, really big, so to try and not get swallowed by a snake. And these guys have teeth in the backs of their mouths basically to pop the toad um, so that they can then swallow it. We do not feed toads to Hoggle here at the zoo. Hoggle gets mice um, and baby mice. So rule of thumb is that snakes can swallow things that are about two to three times the size of their heads. Um, so he doesn't get very, very large mice. Um, so I think we're gonna go ahead and start answering some questions. Uh, so Liam wants to know what length will Hoggle grow to be? So Hoggle is going to be this length. He is pretty much full grown. So I wanna say like a foot and a half. Um, I think that's about right, about a foot and a half. Someone's in the wild will get a little bit bigger, about two feet. And Zachary, uh, does he shed much? Oh, Zachary, I love that question. Yes, he does. And I actually have one of his sheds because he just shed recently. So snakes, depending on the kind, will shed maybe once a month um, about. So this is hoggle shed, and I'm gonna bring it close to the camera because you can see his scale pattern on the shed, which is really pretty cool. And it's crunchy and full of sand. Um, snakes shed kind of, if you wanna think about you taking your sock off, they pull it, you pull it like um, inside out. That's exactly how snakes shed. They, you know, kind of rub up against stuff and it comes off of their body inside out, right? So this is his shed. It is crunchy, different feel than what his body actually feels like. Sherry wants to know, why does he shed? Really good question, Sherry. So all reptiles shed and the biggest reason, uh, there's two reasons why they shed. To get that old skin off, um, it sheds in pieces if you're a lizard. Most snakes shed in one whole piece like Hoggle here, but old skin kind of gets dirty. Um, humans, we also shed our skin. It's just that you don't really see it. We shed all the time. Um, the other reason why snakes shed is to get bigger. So uh, why would Hoggle not get bigger every time he sheds? That's a good question. They reach about a certain length and then they're pretty much done. So he's just shedding about every month to get nice and clean. Natalie wants to know if he is nocturnal. What a good question, Natalie. He's actually called crepuscular. So crepuscular is a big fancy word that means that he is active at dawn and dusk. So when the sun comes up and when the sun goes down. So other animals uh, in our area that are crepuscular would be things like deer and rabbits and sometimes opossums and skunks. Those skunks are a little bit more nocturnal. 
Caroline wants to know, do they hibernate in the winter? Great question, Caroline. And yes, they absolutely do hibernate in the winter. Um, sometimes if it's not as cold or if they do sometimes get a little hungry, they can come out of that hibernation. They'll be in a sleepy state, but then more often than not, they'll, they'll go back to hibernating. Um, so Hoggle here is a Western Hognose Snake for those of you guys just tuning in. His birthday is July 7th, uh, so he will be 13 on July 7th. Um, Bella wants to know what his favorite food is. So here at the zoo, Hoggle gets mice, um, so that is probably his favorite food. However, if he grew up in the wild, um, the most uh, favorite food that he would eat would be toads. Avery wants to know, how much does he eat a day? Oh, Avery, what a great question. See, I like to think that I eat about seven times a day, maybe eight, including all my snacks and my meals. Hoggle only eats once a week, once a week. And most of our snakes do. Some even only eat every other week. So snakes have a very different digestive system than we do. So they're eating things much bigger than their heads, right? Like I said, they can swallow things that are about three times the size of their heads. If that were true for people, we could swallow a watermelon in one giant gulp. A whole watermelon without biting it, right? So you'd be really full too and you'd have this big thing in your belly. So they take a long time to digest that material. So they only need to eat once a week and they eat even less so in the winter time. Um, it looks like a lot of people want to know what color his tongue is. Let's see if we can get him. Hi, bud. I'm going to touch you. Good boy. Oh, look, see, now that I touched him, he's sticking out his tongue. So I bet you guys can see that color, right? And it is, <laughs> if he would sit still, black. He's got a black tongue. Not all snakes' tongues are black, however. Some are purplish, some are red, some are pink. So snakes have different colored tongues. Good boy, Hoggle. Sean wants to know, does he have teeth? He does have teeth, Sean. So um, the, the thing that we have to be careful about when um, us educators teach our interns or new staff on how to handle um, Hoggle, these guys do technically have a toxin. So it's not that they're venomous like a rattlesnake, but they do have a toxin that if you are allergic to bees, Usually, usually you could most likely also be allergic to that toxin um, that hog noses have, but they almost never um, use that toxin. And he has no reason to because he's accustomed to us handling him. Um, so he's not trying to protect himself by, by trying to inject us with any type of toxin or to bite us. Natalie wants to know how he ended up at Elmwood Park Zoo. So I believe that um, he was a private donation. So I think that he came um, from someone who, who ended up donating him to the zoo. Where are you going? You gonna dig again in the dirt? You're gonna go by your shed? Okay. Um, how long have we had him? We have had him um, to my knowledge, the 12 out of the 13 years that he's lived. So we, we got him when he was really, really young, when he was just a year old. Anna wants to know how long they live. So in human care, so at zoos, for example, they could live to 15 or 20. Uh, in the wild, they're only gonna live to be maybe about 10 to 12. Cody wants to know, how do you know if he is a male or a female? What a good question. Um, so, with reptiles, it's very difficult, Cody. Um, if they lay eggs, you know it's a female, right? And um, some snakes and uh, some other reptiles, the males are bigger, but sometimes the females are bigger. So sometimes the girls are bigger, sometimes the boys are bigger. Uh, with Hoggle, the reason why we know is because he did get probed. So a veterinary, a uh, veterinarian can tell uh, you by doing a certain type of examination if it's a male or a female, and he did get that done a while ago, so that's how we know that he's a boy. Um, another way that you can tell is through blood, but that's pretty um, invasive. So what that means is that um, you have to inject them with a, you know, put a needle in them and then try and draw out blood, and we don't want to do that unless absolutely necessary. So uh, some of the snakes we, we assume are a certain gender, or a certain sex rather, but sometimes we don't really know. 
Um, Caitlin's, Caitlin, your birthday is on July 7th too. That's awesome. Are you also turning 13? You'll have to let me know in the comments later, okay? Tina, are snakes your favorite animal? Uh, um, they're one of my favorites. They're probably my favorite group of reptiles. Um, so you guys have met Marissa, one of our other educators before. She's kind of like our reptile guru. Um, turtles are some of her favorites. I really, really like the snakes. They're a very um, misunderstood animal. A lot of people think they're out to get you. They really want nothing to do with you. Almost all snakes want absolutely nothing to do with you. They just want to live their lives, right? Just like we do. Um, and they aren't slimy like a lot of people think. They're actually really, really smooth. So they're pretty cool to touch too sometimes. Again, shouldn't go out and just touch wild snakes though. That's a little dangerous. Sean, does he have any friends? So Hoggle used to live next to, in a separate enclosure, next to a female hognose snake, Katie, who unfortunately passed away. Um, but these guys are solitary. So what that means is what you learned before with like Sydney, for example, the blue tongue skink, these guys don't really like to have friends. They want to kind of keep to themselves, but they like it that way. So he's not lonely, I promise. David, is it legal to have one as a pet? It is legal to have one as a pet. Um, I actually um, know someone who has a hog nose snake as a pet. So yes, you can have these guys as pets. That is allowed. Jackson, what is his favorite enrichment? Oh, that's a really good question. It's really difficult to enrich snakes unless you're giving them a scent to smell, right? Hoggle loves boxes. He loves to hide in things. So what we'll do is we'll take cardboard boxes that are small, we'll cut little holes in them. Sometimes we'll put shredded paper inside so that they can kind of, you know, be nice and warm and cozy. So kind of like what you would think about snuggling under your covers uh, when you go to sleep. Um, so I would say boxes and different types of scents would be uh, some of his favorite kinds of enrichment. Paige, does he have a split tongue? You bet he does, Paige. And do you know why he has a split tongue? I bet you do since you asked that question, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you with my hand, bud. Um, so that split tongue, I'm going to move him so you guys can actually see him on the camera. The split tongue is so that he can smell in two different directions at the same time, right? So what happens is when these guys stick their tongue out, the scent particles in the air, they're microscopic. What that means is you can't see them. They attach to the tips of his tongue. He brings his tongue back into his mouth and then he goes like this. He flicks it and the tips of his tongue touch the roof of his mouth. And it touches something called a Jacobson's organ, which is very similar to, get ready for a big word, a vomeronasal organ that humans have. Basically, that organ can tell Hoggle if that smell is familiar and if he likes it, and if he does, he's gonna go in that direction. So if he had an apple over there and a mouse over here, he's gonna smell both of those things with the tips of his tongue at the same time, and then he's gonna head towards that mouse because Hoggle doesn't like apples. Jennifer wants to know, has he ever tried fruit? He has not, Jennifer, he has not tried fruit. Yep, fruit is not his fave thing. He is a carnivore, so he strictly eats meats. Um, in the wild, these guys will eat other things too, any type of small rodents, um, sometimes if there's not enough to eat insects. But again, he eats mice, and in the wild, hognose snakes will primarily feed on toads. Juliana wants to know, can he swim? So we help our reptiles uh, to shed their skin when they're having a little trouble by giving them nice warm soaks or nice warm baths, just like you guys would take a bath. Um, though he will go in the water, um, he will kind of just sit still and kind of lays around in that water and not move very much. So whether or not he likes to swim, I'm not sure, but he can move around pretty well in that water. Haley wants to know where you can find them in the wild. Very good question, Haley. You can find them more out in the western part of the United States. So it's states like Colorado, Arizona, um, New Mexico, states over out where it's really, really dry. It's hot, like it does get here in Pennsylvania, but it doesn't get nearly as humid over there. Um, so they like that dry, sandy type of climate. Elias wants to know, how fast do they move? Well, Elias, they can move pretty quickly. I don't know if you saw, he got a little bit jumpy a couple of times that I held him, which is why I'm leaving him um, on the table because that's more comfortable for him. Um, so the only times that they would be moving quickly was if they were hunting for food or if they were trying to escape a predator. 
Uh, miles per hour, I'm not really sure the specific number. It's a really good question. We'll have to find that out another time, right? But they can move pretty quickly, especially in the sand. Jose wants to know, when you took this job, were you afraid of snakes? Oh, Elias, good question. So um, I actually work with a couple of people who um, had never handled snakes before and uh, some people who actually really were fearful of snakes. I came into the zoo loving snakes. So um, I had a lot of garter snakes in my backyard when I grew up um, and I was accustomed to them and some black rat snakes as well. Longest snake in Pennsylvania, by the way, they can almost reach seven feet, which is crazy. Um, but I do have some coworkers who have actually overcome their fear of snakes by working with the snakes that we have in our education department, which is really pretty cool. Michael wants to know, how do they eat mice with such a small mouth? Michael, what a fabulous question. So I want you guys to do something. If you take your pointer finger, I'm gonna try and show you. If you take your pointer finger and you put it in front of your ear. So I have this little hooped earring right here and you put it in, right in front of your, not in your ear because that's gross, but in front of your ear. And you can kind of feel that bone. And then I want you guys to open your mouth and close your mouth. Open it, close it. Can you guys feel that bone move? So that's the bone that connects your upper jaw and your lower jaw. So let's pretend for a second that my hands are Hoggle's mouth. He can unhinge or take apart the upper jaw from the lower jaw to open his mouth 180 degrees or a straight line. He can open his mouth this big, this big. And that helps him to swallow things that are so much bigger than his head, okay? Amy um, wants to know, why does he like boxes? Oh, good question. So snakes really like to hide in things because they feel protected that way. So it's dark and cozy and warm and they don't feel nearly as um, out in the open, which is where they would feel most vulnerable. So they feel safe in boxes, which is why he likes to hide under things. So um, we're actually gonna wrap it up, but we will try and answer your questions after this video. Okay, I promise. Again, this is Hoggle, the Western Hognose Snake. Um, that is the, all the time we have for now. Uh, we hope that you'll join us tomorrow at 11, where you'll get to meet one of our education ambassador furry friends. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. And um, if you're interested in helping both of our education and exhibit animals, you can do so by visiting our emergency fund on um, our zoo's website. So that's at elmwoodparkzoo.org. Um, and you can make a donation, you can purchase a membership on the website uh, or adopt an animal. Um, if you're catching this video on YouTube um, or on our website, uh, you can uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and receive notifications of all of our new videos. Also, if you guys watching want to write a story or draw a picture of Hoggle and how he uses his defense mechanisms, um, we'd love to see them in those comments um, and or read those, okay? Thank you guys so much. This is Hoggle, the Western Hognose Snake. I'm Elisa, signing off for today, and we hope to see you guys tomorrow.